Mama Bird and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making some pepper jelly out of some jalapenos that I have. And by I mean some, I mean a whole bag full. One of my favorite jams and jellies is pepper jelly. It has like spicy and sweet and you can incorporate it in all kinds of dishes. It doesn't just have to be on cream cheese and crackers. Although that is quite tasty. I have a few bell peppers here that are little wrinkly and need to get used up. So those are going in as well a couple of sweet red peppers for a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of color. This is a super easy jelly recipe and I can't wait to show you guys how to do it. So let's get in here and I'll show you what to do. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking, and canning and preserving on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. I would love to have you join my family. I also have a Facebook group where we talk about recipe sharing, overall support, and any mean comments get posted there and we have a little chuckle. Cause you know, Mama Bird gotta keep things spicy. So come on and join and let's have some fun together. All right, let's get into this pepper jelly. I'm gonna use my blender to chop these up. It's a good hack where you can just fill your blender with water and mix up onions or peppers and it dices them into a small dice without sitting there having to dice them all. So I'm gonna give these just a rough chop. Now if you notice the bag on the counter, I'm putting all of the pepper stems and insides in there. I like to add this to my stock. So I'll put this in my freezer with any of the onion stuff in there or with any of these bell pepper stems. I think it adds a really good flavor to homemade stock. So I just put all scraps of the stuff in this bag and I'll have that in my freezer. So I tried it without the water and it just kind of made a mess. It just kind of chopped it up. It didn't get them going. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. And that's really the trick for dicing anything using your blender is to have some water. Now if you go too long then it'll make pepper soup. But if you just sit here and dice it until they're chunky and give it a stop, then you'll have nice diced peppers. All right, so I'm just gonna move on to the jalapenos. Same kind of thing. I am going to save the stems, put them in my bag. Now, I've never really had this many jalapeno peppers stems in my bag before, so hopefully that doesn't make my stock spicy. But same thing, I'm gonna put them in the same blender, use a little bit of water, and we're gonna dice these up so they're nice and small for our pepper jelly. Yeah, it's working really good. I should have my thingamabob I stick in there and move it around, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just shaking the blender and that usually helps really good to get it in there. As long as you don't do your turbo speed on your blender, then it won't turn into pepper soup and they'll dice them up like this. And just like that. Oh yeah, it looks good. I love some diced peppers. So I'm gonna pour this in here. I ended up doing two rounds of the peppers. So that bowl was pretty full by the end of it. And just give your blender a rinse and that'll get all of that extra bits out and then I had to strain it all over the counter but I wanted to keep this juice so I wanted to make sure I strain that so there's no extra moisture in the peppers than necessary but I still get to keep that juice I have about six cups of pepper juice left over from the blending now last time I made this I did drain this into the sink I did not save it and you guys yelled at me and I deserve it, so thanks. So now I am going to keep this and I'm gonna use this for my stock because there's a lot of good flavor in this, but I really like using my blender as a hack to dice everything. So I'm gonna keep doing that, but I'm definitely gonna make sure that I start saving this juice. So thank you guys for yelling at me. Do it anytime. I am currently making some stock right now, so I went and added half of it to it. Hopefully it doesn't make it too spicy. I might regret that, but we'll see. And then I have, I guess, about three cups left here. I got some nifty deli containers. So I put the rest of the juice in here, row pepper juice on it, and the month and the year, and this is going in my freezer. All right, guys, so I ended up getting a total of 12 cups of peppers, which is a lot. Might have went a little heavy on the peppers, but that's okay. That means I'm gonna end up getting a triple batch, which is a lot of jelly. But I'm okay with that because I actually ran out this year and I really like pepper jelly. So why not make a bunch of it if I have it? I was going to separate it and maybe... I was going to separate it and maybe store some for later. But you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and turn all of it into pepper jelly. Once you get done with the prepping of all the peppers, it's really easy to take it from here. So let's get in close and I'll show you how to make a triple batch of this pepper jelly. And so I got my containers here of the peppers. I'm just going to go ahead and combine them. I was just going to do eight, and then this was exactly four cups more, and it was exactly 12 cups. I'm like, you know what? It was meant to be. We're just going to do a triple batch. So there's our 12 cups of peppers. So I'm using apple cider vinegar, just the big gallon one from Winco. 
For our triple batch, we're going to use three cups of apple cider vinegar and then three cups of pectin. I'm just using a store brand. I'm just gonna whisk this in. All right, that's incorporated. Throw on my trash here. Next step, all you're gonna do is add the peppers and vinegar mixture to your pot and let it boil for at least one minute. After this part, we're gonna go ahead and dump in 12 cups of sugar. So you want one cup of sugar to one cup of peppers or whatever jelly you're going to be making, fruit jelly or something. That's usually the ratio is one cup of peppers or fruit to one cup of sugar. So this has the peppers, the vinegar, the pectin, and now the sugar in it. And this is gonna take a while to come up to temperature. So we're gonna wait for this to come to a boil. Just got anything else we can add? Not yet, we gotta wait for it to boil. Boil? Yeah, what's boil mean? Let it sit? No. Um. Boil. So we're waiting for this to boil. Yes. So it needs to what? What does boil mean? It means we have to cook for a few hours? Nope, big bubbles. Big bubbles! Yep, we're waiting for it to have big bubbles. I'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Like, like, the, like, like the spaghetti sauce. Exactly. Yep, yeah, we want this to boil and then we'll let it boil for one minute. We're starting to get some action here, but you want it at a rolling boil. So that means whenever you stir it, then the bubbles will continue to come and you can't get them to stop. So after I stop stirring this, you can see that the bubbles go away. They're, it's no longer boiling. So this isn't quite ready. All right, guys, this is what I'm talking about. So I'm stirring it, stirring it, you stop, the bubbles just keep on coming. So this is when you're going to set a one minute timer. You can do a half inch headspace on any kind of jellies. I did half between a one inch, depending on what I got. And now here I just have some distilled vinegar and you're gonna wipe the rims really good. You wanna make sure you get a clean part of the towel with every jar. You gotta get that sticky off for the lids to stick. Now I do reuse my lids. I check to make sure the seals are good. Like I have used this, this is gonna be my third time using that lid. So that's just something that I do to save money. I try and really inspect it to make sure that they're good seals and try and save as much as possible. This is one I'm not gonna reuse because it's stained. Some of them have the seal torn or has a rust spot. So those are the ones that I do not use. So I do go through them and check them. These gray seal ones just don't seem to stick very well at all and they always seem to break their seal after a couple of days. So I just am not gonna be pressure canning or water bathing with those anymore at all. And then you just go to fingertip tight. Look at that pretty color in my quilted jar here. Oh, it's so exciting. So fingertip tight, and as you can see, this is an old coconut oil bottle, but they st it still works, it still fits the lid. So always want to check your jars to see if you can reuse them. And then with your water, you want it to be at least one inch above the jars. Like here, I always go a little less. Once you put the full jars in there, it'll raise the water up. So here, once I have all the jars, you can see it's over the top, but don't wanna force it. Like that one, it's not gonna fit. I have to do another round anyway, so just don't force it. I like to use my pressure cooker as a water bather. So I put the lid on and we're gonna water bath this for 10 minutes and that's all she wrote. You do wanna make sure they sit in the water for a little bit before you take them out. But here they are, all nice and done. Beautiful pepper jelly. Hey everybody, it is the next morning and I wanted to show you how much pepper jelly I got and the results of it. They all turned out, they all sealed. Ended up with eight jelly jars, five pints, and then I did have a little four ounce jelly jar, but I sent that to work with husband to give to one of his coworkers because she loves pepper jelly and spicy stuff. So from this point, all you're gonna do is take off the rings. You're going to wash these really good. Make sure you get up and under the lip so that way any sticky residue gets cleaned. You're going to let them dry and then you're going to label them and stick them on your shelf. Now this is one of a reusable jar with a lid that I already used once and it's sealed. You can even grab it by the lid 
shake it around. It is kind of loose, but that is normal for pepper jelly, in my experience anyway. Um, yeah, so like this one, I've used this lid twice. It's sealed. You see how it's kind of sticky and rusty under there from leaving the rings on? That's why you always want to take your rings off when you storm. You don't want to leave them on there. Plus, or you can just put them on there loosely because the thing about having them tight when it's on there is that if that seal is bad, it won't open. So you won't be able to press the button and tell that it's bad. So that's why it's important to either leave your rings off or at least just kind of leave them loose if you don't have a spot to put them. So we're gonna be getting those all washed up and put away later, but for right now, I'm going to be making a recipe with it. And one thing I like to do is cook with whatever product I just taught you how to make and pepper jelly. Look how pretty that is. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing something really different with that pepper jelly today, and I'm going to be making a jalapeno cupcake. I know, I know, I'm crazy. A spicy cupcake, but you top it with that sweet cream cheese icing and just the sweetness from the cake mix itself. It's really good, guys. If you like that spicy sweet combination, you're gonna like this cupcake. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this. I am going to use a Duncan Hines pre-box cake mix, just the white one. Now this one has an expiration date by July of 21. So this roughly went out 18 months ago, uh, maybe a little more, but that's okay because um, it's still good. The only thing is that I am going to add some extra baking powder just to make sure that it does leaven because cake mixes are still good after they're past their expiration date, but they can lose their leavening power. So just add a couple of teaspoons of baking powder, they're good to go. So we're going to do that and then I'm also going to try this neat egg that I have because I'm hoarding my fresh eggs for my chickens to make some breakfast meals for my freezer. So I am used, so I'm saving all of those. And I do have this though that is equivalent to 18 eggs and you just mix this with water. So I'm just going to use three eggs worth of ingredients here. All right, and I think that's all I'm going to tell you. So let's get in here and I'll show you how to put together a jalapeno cupcake. All right, let me drink some coffee first. Mm. All right, so first thing in this box mix, first thing in box mix is it calls for one cup of water and three egg whites. So I have my one cup measuring here for my R2D2 guy, he's so cute. Um, I'm going to use half of the pickled juice from some pickled jalapenos. Okay, so half a cup of spicy juice. Woo! We're gonna use some of those too. Another tip with cake mixes is if you use milk instead of water, it comes out a lot creamier. So I'm going to add milk to this now. It, this is a vinegar brine, this jalapeno juice, so it will spoil the milk, but that's kind of just gonna make it buttermilk, which is super good in baked goods anyway. So I'm going to do half a cup of spicy pickled juice, and then the other half is going to be milk. Okay, so this is just 1% milk. We will add it to that. Let that sit for a minute. And while that's sitting, we will go ahead and open our meat egg here. So two tablespoons of water to one tablespoon of egg mix equals one egg. Tablespoons are in the dishwasher, so we're just gonna guesstimate. About a tablespoon, one, two, three. Okay, so here's what it looks like. You can also use mashed bananas um, or you can use chia seeds and flax seeds. Those also are good egg substitutes. Whoa, that's interesting. Kind of looks like slime. I don't know who invented slime, but I hate it. Huh, all right, so that's what it looks like. Interesting, okay. And now let's add our jalapeno pickles and milk juice. <laughs> this is one of those where you got to trust the process guys it doesn't look good but trust the process i wonder if i whisk this if that'd be better or i can fork it you know what comes after spooning it's forking oh yeah that's better all right so we got that all mixed up that looks pretty distributed 
Let's open our cake mix here. Now cake mixes, you do want to kind of beat them to get the, the lumps out. So that's why they say to use a mixer. If you're going to use a mixer to mix them for two minutes, like that's quite a long time of, of beating. Whoops. Okay. Hey, it's never baking unless you spill some on the floor, right? I mean, I could have gotten a bigger bowl. You think I'd learned my lesson by now? Negative. Ah! Oh, that was a close one. Alright, now I'm going to add my couple of teaspoons of baking powder. Just a little bit. I didn't even measure. That's probably one teaspoon. And this does seem a little thick, so I do think I'm going to add a little more milk to it. That looks better. So we'll call that, we're gonna let this rest. And then I'm going to cut up some of these pickled jalapenos to mix in with the batter. About half a cup or so there. I'm gonna try and get these as small as possible. I wonder if I can get the kids to try this. Husband thought I was crazy. You guys think I'm crazy? That's okay. You can think I'm crazy. I think I'm crazy too. I just tried this at a bakery one time and it was really good. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and recreate that. And I know in the inside they had the pepper jelly mixed with Cool Whip, which is what we're going to do. So that's what inspired this is the filling for this cupcake. Alright, let's get these mixed in. There we go. Spicy jalapeno. I might try some of it. Let's try some of the batter. Oh my gosh. It is really not too spicy. I don't know if you guys worry about it being spicy. It is not spicy. These cake mixes are very sweet. Um, just like me. Ah. Oh, it's one tenth of a serving. One cake has 10 servings. Nobody told me that. I thought it was like a four serving for one of the Okay. Anyway, lots of sugar, lots of sugar. You don't need to know exactly how much sugar, but lots of sugar. I have some cupcake liners here that are just kind of extra, so I'm gonna throw this in my pan. We'll get this scooped up, and let's get this baked. And while it's baking, we'll work on the filling. That got me 20 cupcakes, so I'm gonna put this in at a 325 degree oven, and we're gonna cook this for, I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer, and then we'll check them. Now that we have the cupcakes in the oven, we're going to turn our attention to the filling. So I'm going to open up a one of my pints. So this one, it's not quite full. It's still sealed. It's not quite under the one inch mark, so it's fine. But I decided I'm gonna open this one up first. First thing is that we're going to try it, see how it tastes. Second thing, we're gonna mix up our whipped topping. So let's get in here. All right, so whenever you're opening up a jar, you get right under the lid and the lip here, and then you just twist. There's our jelly. Looks pretty good. And it's got some big chunks of jalapenos, but that's okay. okay. And then I just got some Cool Whip in here. Let's just use half of it for now. So the coolness, the Cool Whip will help tone down the spiciness of it. You could add like some red food coloring if you want to, but I'm not going to. Oh, 
let's check the cupcakes. I'm gonna put those cupcakes back in for three more minutes. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, let's try this jelly. I forgot to try the jelly. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. The spiciness with the sweetness. I just love that combination. I don't think it's really that spicy either. Like you get a little bit of a like a lingering heat on the back of your tongue, but I mean, I'm not crying, you know. So let's try, let's try our filling. I think I'm gonna add more jelly to this because you kind of get hints of it, but you mostly just taste cool with. So let's add some more of the pepper jelly to this. And now we wait for the cupcakes. All right, I'm gonna give this whipped topping one more taste just to make sure that was enough. Oh yeah, it tastes much better. All right, so let's wait for those cupcakes and I'll bring it back. Another item I received in my TMU haul is a bunch of different tips here, a piping bag, a coupler here, and just very simple for basic cake decorating. I really like this. I think this is a great deal. So I'm going to need to be stuffing the cupcakes with this as well as decorating them. So let's get this put together. Okay, so you just take the coupler here and you put it first in the bag. Oh, it. Let's see. Might have to trim it for that. I think they have it trimmed so you can just put the tip right in there, that's what she said. So let's do this smaller one here for the cupcake filling. Yeah, there you go. So this is good for use if you just wanna need it for one thing, but I'm going to trim it so it fits the coupler so that way you can use the same bag and switch out the tips without needing to wash your bag every time. Now my cupcakes just came out. They were in there for probably about 15 minutes. I like to put this straight into the freezer so the cupcakes quit cooking and it kind of seals in the moisture. So these are gonna go in the freezer for about 15 minutes. We have the cupcakes cooling. So that's what you want, just enough to be able to twist that on there. And then you stick the tip on here like this. And then you twist it on. It's a little loose. I might still have to trim it some more to get the. Oh, hold on. All right, so we're gonna trim it even a little more here because we want this coupler to come out with the. There you go, with the um, grooves here, and then pick your tip, put it on there, and then this goes around it. And then the tip's tight, and there you go. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge for now until our cupcakes are ready, and then we will fill them up and ice them. All right, the cupcakes are out of the freezer, so let's get some of these and fill them up. All right, so the best way to get this in here is to fold this over in on itself, like that. I like to put my hand up and under the bag and kind of fold it around my hand And then you have the hole there for the filling. Let's give it in. And then you can fold it right back up. And there's no mess. A bit, a bit of a squeeze, it's coming out. Now to fill your cupcake, you don't need to dig any out or anything. 
just stick the tip in there. I like to go till I feel the bottom and squeeze. And then it'll push the cake out of the way and make room for that filling. So this is how much I have left over. Not too bad. These piping bags are really easy to clean. You just run them through with some hot water. I like to fill them and just kind of squeeze it out, force all that icing out. Make sure you get the tip and the coupler off. I also can just squirt a little bit of Dawn soap in there and then you pinch one in and the other and you shake it up and down and that kind of helps scrub the inside of it. So they're not too hard. I would not put these in the dishwasher. The high heat of them would probably melt them, but they're very easy to hand clean. And then I usually like to just put them over a surface where they'll dry out, like my little water dispenser here is what I like to do. I do that when I wash Ziploc bags as well. For the icing, I'm gonna be using some cream cheese icing that I had in my freezer. I made this when I made the banana cake with my kids. And I just make a lot of extra icing and keep it in the freezer. It freezes really well. So this is the one from October. So we're gonna open this up. That looks like. Give this a stir. So let's change our tip. What would you guys use? We got all kinds of fancy ones. I really like these. Like these are good quality tips. They don't bend easily, you know, so good. This is one for making leaves. So let's do, let's just do a simple star tip here. Always like to twist the bag to make sure none can come up on you. Okay. Not too shabby. Tell it's been a minute since I've been in a bakery. <laughs> Does it look too bad? I actually went to pastry school and I've done some cake decorating. So it's been a minute though, since I've had a piping bag in my hand. Yeah, that looks really smooth. Looks really nice. Well, I feel like it can hold quite a bit of icing. I could probably fill it up a little more too, but I just, I know my own clumsiness and the mess I make. You guys know that as well. <laughs> could always get fancy and maybe drizzle some of the pepper jelly over it. How's that look? My icing's a little loose. I probably could have, if it's like this, when it comes out of the freezer, you just add more powdered sugar. It'll stiffen it right back up. Ooh. Look at that. All right. Cheers. Mmm. It'd be better with less runny um, cream cheese icing. But man, that's good, guys. I didn't get too much filling in this one. I guess you can squeeze a little harder in there. There's some in there though. There's some. Mm. 
it's so messy it's like you got to eat the whole thing at one time right and this is one of the things you cannot put down i wish i'll never be able to pick it back up i guess i'm just forced to eat the whole thing this is so good i really like the chunks of pickled jalapeno in the cake so it's kind of like you're getting a bit of a crunch but it's really not a lot of spice at all guys Mm. wow that's really good so if you're looking for something a little different to do with your pepper jelly i highly suggest that i even like that drizzled on top or if you have cowboy stop it like twitching out over there or if you have cowboy candy that would be good to put a piece of that on top of there that would be a nice decoration you could dye these pink or green to kind of match the theme of the jalapeno if you like I think these are absolutely fantastic. Nothing like mixing spicy with dessert, right? Well, thank you so much for coming along and learning how to make pepper jelly with me and using it in a unique way. I appreciate you guys so much. Please give this video a like for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time on Mama Bird's. in the big deep snow please these are not our snow boots thank you <laughs> so cold what a way to start <laughs> we got to do not to buy you and make it home okay can you make hot cocoa too hot cocoa yeah yeah Yeah, buddy. I got Yeah, I want to kind of go down to this part down here. But this is right up here. I saw you this. Wait, this was so crazy. <laughs> was it crazy? Yeah. That was a close one. Well, I feel so bad. That's not true. You did. But how did you get up there? Whoa. Oh, here. Mm. Right here is good. Come on. Go down. Gotcha.
careful guys, you don't want to break off so much or fall in. Just let me get out of the way, little girl. Thank you. Good job. Uh, I don't need your help. You don't need my help either? Guys, look at this. This really. Guys, come over here for one second. Hey, Mama. We can just. Come on, turn it on. We can just try to get to there, to, the, to those rocks. I don't need your help. Then we get to there. One, two, three. Yeah, but I do not know how we had to get to there. You okay? You okay? Is that slippery? Yes. You cool? You good? Yeah. Man, just, you're tough. I just tried on my butt. See, look. Watch it. You want to do it again? Oh, I see you did that. I don't know why we go through so many pants around here. Found a path we can cross? Yep, this is the path we can cross. I found it. I can't break it. Whoa. Gotta get right on the end. There you go, do it one more time. One more time, right there in that corner one. Yep, yep, there you go. You just get what? Eighty lid. Uh oh. Well, I can't warm it up now. So boy. Oh no! Don't be getting your shoes all wet. Conrad. Now can we help? Isn't that water cold? I did not want to get 
get wet, children. Ah. I do not want to get my boots wet. Yep, you're on your own, kid. Conrad. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> the only way is to walk out. I didn't know it was cold in Montana. Mama, we were gonna freeze and Well, whose fault is that? What? You're Look at this. Is that a wild animal? Yes. What animal print is that? A dog. Oh, a wild, <gasps> ferocious dog was here. Ugh. Let's go. 